Did Trump really call for political violence? Biden and Bibi's eroding relationship? And will the human race soon travel to a galaxy far, far away from the Milky Way? The lactose intolerance sure hope so. Then more on this week's America Uncovered headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Let's start with some good news this week. Specifically, good news in love. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, marriage rates are going up and divorce rates are going down, leading out of the pandemic. Yes, you heard that right. This research was conducted by the CDC, which your forever bachelor friend is absolutely going to use as evidence to support his theory that marriage is a disease, bro. Experts say these numbers are trending this way post-pandemic because being locked down with someone really makes you connect and overcome adversity, creating a stronger emotional bond. Personally, I think it's because housing prices are so insane that the only way to afford one is to stick it out with your significant other no matter what. And with extreme weather events raising home insurance costs so high, many people can't afford it. Some couples are probably like, you cheated with 19 other people? Great! See if they want to live with us so we can pool our money and maybe afford a three bedroom. But housing could soon become more affordable. A $418 million settlement over four antitrust cases involving the National Association of Realtors could bring a quote-unquote seismic shift to the housing market. The settlement does away with rules that required the sellers of the house to pay the 5-6% to industry standard commission rates for realtors. Plaintiffs argued the rules caused sellers to inflate house prices. What a relief. Now it'll be much, much easier for corporations to buy even more single-family homes. Hopefully, though, this will bring house prices down. Also, hopefully, laws like this bill recently introduced in California will pass that would ban or greatly disincentivize corporations from buying up so many homes. But until then, a majority of my generation will have to stick out our original plan for one day being able to afford a house being super nice to our grandparents so we get a fat slice of that inheritance in the will. Speaking of wealthy old people, Donald Trump. Trump gave a speech at a rally supporting Ohio Republican Senate primary candidate Bernie Moreno. And, like with a lot of his speeches, it caused quite a stir. Some news outlets claimed that Trump said there would be a bloodbath if he lost the election. And the Biden-Harris campaign accused Trump of threatening political violence. So, what did Trump Actually say, let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal. Those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Oh. Personally, the most alarming part of that was Trump saying he considers Xi Jinping a friend. But the mainstream media was more alarmed over Trump's use of the word bloodbath. And by alarmed, I mean elated, specifically for that sweet, sweet clickbait. And it is alarming, Trump said bloodbath, even if the context was that the auto industry would suffer under Biden policies, because bloodbath is such a violent word. The mainstream media would never use such violent language. What's that, Shelley? Trump posted a two-minute montage of media outlets using the term bloodbath. Bloodbath at the RNC. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really and tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies. Are they reporting the news or advertising for one of those extreme haunted houses you have to sign a waiver for? This week's stories are apparently brought to you by Spirit Halloween. The media's portrayal of Trump's bloodbath comment prompted a historian who appears on MSNBC to admit Trump was referring to the auto industry and not threatening a violent coup. But then he compared Trump to Hitler and suggested he was a fascist. So close. And after the break, the Supreme Court and social media. Welcome back. The Supreme Court heard arguments from the states of Louisiana and Missouri, which accused the Biden administration of violating the First Amendment by colluding with social media platforms to censor posts they deemed as misinformation. The Supreme Court hasn't come to a decision as of this recording, 
But at the moment, it seems as though they're going to side with the Biden administration. This is historic, as the government is now my new least favorite influencer on social media. And here I thought it couldn't get any shadier than the Paul brothers. Supreme Court Justice Kintaji Brown Jackson says, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the federal government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the entire point of the First Amendment, and every other one. To set limits on the government, this is like saying, I'm worried stop signs and speed bumps hamstring my ability to drive 90 in a school zone. The misinformation is harmful, and there should be attempts to stop it. But why do that through education and teaching critical thinking skills when you can just let the government do it? I mean, it's not like politicians have ever shown themselves to be untrustworthy. So I see no problem with letting them be the ultimate judge on what is or isn't the truth. Why? Any minute now, I expect the Biden administration to come out and make sure that everyone on social media knows Trump's use of the word bloodbath was mischaracterized and wasn't a call for violence. Yep. Any minute now. Speaking of lies and the lying liars, who lie them? Vladimir Putin. Russia held its presidential election, and going against three candidates that were approved by the Kremlin, Putin won in a landslide, gaining over 87% of the votes. Wow! What a shocking, unexpected outcome! This is almost as surprising as watching a guy win a spelling bee where he was the only participant and threatened to murder anyone who opposed him or corrected how he spelled restaurant. That U placement is tricky. And how did Putin celebrate? Champagne, a cigar? Nope! By warning NATO that directly confronting Russia would be one step away from World War III, saying, I think hardly anyone is interested in this. And he would know, because if anyone is an expert on what people are interested in, its president won by 87% landslide in a totally free and fair election, Putin. According to a report from the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, the world's leading authority on hunger, parts of northern Gaza far exceed famine-level food shortages, and mass deaths are imminent. The number of civilian deaths in the Israel-Hamas war has created a divide between the U.S. and Israel, who have long been close allies. President Biden spoke to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu, yes, that is his real nickname, over the phone for the first time in a month. And you know it's bad if they haven't spoken on the phone in over a month, because people that age definitely don't text. At best, they FaceTime while pointing the camera at just their chin. Biden reportedly told Netanyahu that a planned Israeli military operation in Rafah, a city in South Gaza where over a million Palestinian civilians are sheltering, would be a mistake. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan explains a military plan cannot succeed without an integrated humanitarian plan and political plan. And the president has repeatedly made the point that continuing military operations need to be connected to a clear strategic endgame. Biden is facing pressure to put pressure on Israel, with several Democrats, especially Michigan, threatening to drop their support of Biden over his support of Israel. This is like when you have a friend that nobody likes, like Trump and Xi Jinping, apparently, and you're afraid they're going to do something stupid that'll make you look bad by associating with them. Like getting a ton of truly unfortunate tattoos, only in this case, the tattoos are thousands of civilian deaths. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, a fellow Democrat, went one step further and called for new elections in Israel to replace Netanyahu and his government. He says, at this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel, at a time when so many Israelis have lost their confidence in the vision and direction of their government. Wow, I can't believe a sitting U.S. politician is openly calling for regime change in another country, instead of just secretly sending in the CIA to take care of it. You can tell Israel really is a friend of the U.S. because Schumer wants to stab them in the front. Some think Schumer and Biden are only criticizing Israel to pander to their base for votes. And then Yahoo responded to Schumer's statement saying, The majority of Israelis support the policies of my government. It's not a fringe government. It represents the policies supported by the majority of the people. If Senator Schumer opposes these policies, he's not opposing me, he's opposing the people of Israel. So yeah, the U.S.-Israel relation is definitely a bit strained at the moment. But hey, I guess it could always be worse. And after the break, asbestos! Welcome back. The Environmental Protection Agency announced a total ban of asbestos, a carcinogen that kills thousands of Americans every year. 
Asbestos is still used in brake pads, chlorine bleach, and a few other things. The decision led millions of Americans to think, asbestos wasn't already banned? Asbestos use is one of those things I thought died in the early 90s, like hair metal, the USSR, and George H.W. Bush's streak of not vomiting on Japanese prime ministers. I'd say with his rulings, American will be a lot healthier, but with all the other harmful chemicals still out there, I wouldn't hold my breath. On second thought, I may never stop holding my breath. Gemini, Google's AI model, which has received backlash for its questionable depiction, or lack thereof, of white people, could be built into future iPhones, as Apple is exploring a deal with Google. Though Apple may want to pause that potential deal because the Justice Department filed an antitrust lawsuit against the company, accusing Apple of creating a smartphone monopoly and stifling innovation. The last thing they need is contend with this lawsuit and deal with massive issues with iPhone's facial recognition software, with white people being unable to access their phones since Gemini refuses to recognize them. Speaking of African Americans, Elon Musk. Former CNN anchor Don Lemon interviewed Elon Musk. Once the interview was complete, Musk canceled a planned deal between X and Lemon. During the interview, the two engaged in heated discussions on several topics, including free speech. Darn that free speech hamstringing the government's ability to have a good time. It was a lot to sit through, and if I wanted to watch two of the most annoying types of people have a prolonged heated argument, I'd just go to a comic shop and ask Marvel and DC fanboys who would win in a fight between Batman and Iron Man. In the interview, Musk said he had a prescription for ketamine to treat depression and that his investors should see that as a good thing since it helps him get out of a negative frame of mind and be more productive. It's kind of hard to argue that since Musk recently once again surpassed Jeff Bezos to become the richest person in America. Wait, did I say Musk was annoying? I, I was joking. Everyone knows old Elon loves a good joke. Please add me to your will. I want to buy a house. Musk's next big undertaking is SpaceX's Starship Mega Rocket. He says, this starship is designed to travel our entire solar system, and a starship, much larger and more advanced, will travel to other star systems. If that happens, it'll make Musk's investors happier than if he shared his ketamine with them. And this news will probably lead to even more marriages and fewer divorces, since people will only be able to afford this trip to another star system by pooling money with all their spouses' affair partners. We're not going to court, we're going to space! And in my ongoing attempt to talk about all the things YouTube considers too controversial by hiding it in gaming content, I'm talking about the border crisis. In Skyrim, in the video game Skyrim. Please, don't make any connection to real world events. Check it out and let me know what you think. And America Uncovered wouldn't exist without your support. Click that orange button to support us on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode and you can set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.